So a lot of people don't get involved with seed saving because they're concerned about the problem of cross-pollination. Or they think that you have to have pure seed. And, well, people are used to going to the store or trusting the, um, the authorities for their, for their um, materials and resources. However, I want to make the point today that you don't really have to be so concerned, especially in the backyard garden. For a seed company, <clears throat> if you get off types, say of a beet or a corn, that could be a disaster because they're relying on uh, the advertising and the, the um, claim of pure seed. However, in a backyard garden, if you get a few yellow beets with your pink ones or a few um, pink carrots with your orange ones, that may not be a liability. It may, in fact, be a blessing. When you throw the genes into play, whether it's with the squash or the tomatoes, you sometimes come up with some miraculous results. So I'm not going to brag about this squumpkin. However, how do you think some of these remarkable varieties evolved? Originally, these evolved out of the, um, the selected crosses, the random crosses, I should say, of genetic material, which certain people back in history found desirable, interesting, beautiful, or tasty. And it, they, they were special enough for them to save and to preserve. So again, while it's important to observe the, the principles of purity and self-pollination versus cross-pollination, just because you don't have the ability to isolate or hand pollinate your cross pollinating crops doesn't mean that you can't try growing their seed. And you can always do a test and um, if your test shows that you've got what you wanted or something that's desirable nonetheless, well, that's interesting and it might even yield some remarkable results.